Ladies and gentlemen, joining me right now is Kathleen McGinty, the Chief of Staff for uh, Governor uh, Tom Wolf. Talk to us a little bit about the budget in the state. It looks like there's no love between the Democrats and the Republicans, both in the State House and the State Senate. Are we going to have a possibility where we don't reach a budget agreement before June 30th? Listen, this is what it's about. It's about kids and it's about education. Unfortunately, we had the Republican House vote down money just last week for education. Uh, the governor is saying the people have spoken in this election that we have to do right by our kids and right by our schools. I think at the end of the day, we'll win that message, but the legislature needs to hear from every parent, every student, Every grandma, grandpa out there that cares about what we're doing with our kids and our schools, this is the time. Make your voice heard. But are you frustrated with the level of it? Because when what I'm reading, you, you, the governor and the Republicans in the House and the Senate, you're really far apart. And I could see where you don't have a budget by July 1st, and it could go longer. Is there that possibility, realistic? Well, listen, the governor's budget's been out there since March 3rd. Completely on-time budget, no gimmicks budget. That's a long time it's been sitting there. Now, I will say that we are just this week starting to see some seriousness in the conversation. The governor has been there every day, convening meetings, attending meetings, trying to push the agenda. So I think there's still every possibility we could and should get this done on time. And your hope is to get it done by Our that. hope is to get it done on time. There's no excuse for not getting it done on time because, again, this has been out there since March in detail. However, we should make one thing clear. It's about the kids. And if this budget doesn't do right by the kids, the substance is more important than the date, and the governor will wait for a good budget with real numbers, real investment in our schools, instead of just signing a budget that's bad for the sake of signing it on time. Ladies and gentlemen, you're hearing a live uh, interview with Kathleen McGinty, the chief of staff for Governor uh, Tom Wolf. We're out in the hallway because of our technology, uh, new technology that we have, so we do a thank you. Uh, we will get back to the business of council momentarily, but this is an important thing. So what does the governor specifically want? Like, if, if the Republicans come back and say, listen, we want X, we want Y, but what, what is your, like, line in the sand? Here's what the governor's talking about. One, that we fund our schools with a reasonable, fair tax on the shale gas companies, the only state that doesn't have a shale severance tax. Second, that we cut people's property taxes. We get you that job done. People can't afford where the property taxes have been. And again, when it's property taxes, it's unfair to our kids in poor school districts. And third, that we have to have a no gimmicks budget. You know, we've been 50th in job creation in the United States, $2 billion budget deficit because it's been phony baloney budgets. The governor wants a real budget, an honest budget that funds education with a reasonable severance tax and cuts people's property taxes. That's the deal. But do you think that you're going to be able to get that? I mean, because the Republicans are saying, from what I'm reading, they want certain things. They want things like uh, pension reform. So is that going to happen? I mean, isn't the governor going to have to give a little to get a little? Well, listen, uh, only the governor has put forward a pension reform plan that actually cuts the costs of our pensions for taxpayers. All of the other proposals that these guys have been talking about are a bunch of sound bites that do very well by Wall Street but actually cost the taxpayer billions of dollars of new and additional costs. The governor's all in in pension reform. But we got to get real, get beyond the sound bites, and, and do a real plan. And that's what he's put on the table. My final question to you, a uh, couple of them. Philadelphia is obviously looking for a lot of money from this budget, uh, especially for schools. I think they're looking for like over 160 to $200 million. Looking at things right now, are they realistically going to get that? Or are you advising Dr. Height? hey, you need to plan on the possibility of us us being the state not giving that to you. Well, listen, the, the governor's budget uh, cuts property taxes for families in every school district in Pennsylvania and increases education funding in every school district. Now, the, it does right by Philadelphia as well. Probably the better part of $600 million of new funding for Philadelphia that would fund the schools, that would cut property taxes and critically important, it delivers a massive cut in the Philadelphia wage tax, bringing that wage tax back down to 1976 
level. But that's if you get it passed. And I guess what I'm get, I guess what I'm trying to get listeners out here is, should the superintendent possibly prepare, because he still has to prepare a budget, that he won't get all the money that he's asking for from the state? Well, it would be history making if the legislature cut the dollars that the governor is asking for for education. It has never happened before that a legislature has failed to fund the schools to the level that a governor has proposed. And I don't think this legislature wants that legacy, especially on the heels of an election that was 100 percent about our kids and schools and education. So if people have their voices heard, we'll get a fair budget that funds our schools and that cuts people's property taxes. How critical is it for the governor in the mind of the administration to get what he's asking for in the first year? Because what he's asking for is a home run in a lot of ways. And do you think if he gets it now, it's important to get it now because he might not get it in years two, three, and four? You see what I'm saying? Like, how important is this first year for ramping up everything that the governor wants to do in years two, three, and four? You know, I I wish this was a wish list, but here's where we are. We've got a $2 billion budget deficit. We're 50th out of 50 states in creating jobs. And our credit rating has been whacked by the credit rating agency so that we're second or third lowest in the country. What does that say? Status quo is going to kill the Commonwealth. So we're at, this budget's about giving us a new chance. And so every part of it is about, frankly, solving the sins of the past that the governor has inherited. As from the Republican, to, from former governor. From the former governor and four years of phony baloney budgets. And as he likes to say, is it's not his fault, but it is his responsibility. And so this budget steps up to that responsibility. Now, many of these guys in the legislature in Harrisburg, almost all of them, were there for those four years and voted for those phony baloney budgets. So it is kind of their fault and their responsibility, and the governor expects that they will step up, do the right thing, a uh, serious budget with no phony baloney numbers, investing in education with a fair shale severance tax on the oil and gas companies and cut people's property taxes. That's the shot in the arm our economy absolutely needs. Two final questions to you, Kathleen, as we, as we await for council to get done with their hearing, and I do appreciate it. We're speaking to Kathleen McGinty, the chief of staff, to uh, Governor uh, Tom Wolf, live here on 900 AM WURD. Let's ask you a political question. In Philadelphia, we've lost two state reps to corruption. Uh, there's a possibility of losing two more. All of them are Democrats. Um, Does that hurt the governor as you're dealing with not having as many Democrats because every vote's important? And has the governor spoken to the other two folks that are that are on the block? Um, Council uh, 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 State Representative Vanessa Larry Brown and uh, Louise Bishop and said, hey, for the good of the party, maybe you should leave. Has there been any talk about that? Well, look, I think overall, all of our hearts are heavy when anything like this happens, right? Um, that one of the things that is so important to the governor, we we're just talking about having a budget that's not phony baloney. It's all part of something that says we've got to reinstill the confidence of the people in this commonwealth in their government. It's essential to the working of our democracy that people have faith and confidence that their elected representatives are in it for them, not for self-interest. Would the governor like those, Kathleen, would the governor like those two representatives to resign so that the party can move on? I, I think the governor will leave those kinds of choices to those representatives, to their conscience, to their set of values, their priorities. But one, it is imperative we restore trust and faith in government. And two, pragmatically, it hurts every time we lose a vote. And unfortunately, we've needed every single Democratic vote because we haven't had Republicans stepping up to vote for education. In fact, one week ago, the Republicans in the House voted down dollars for education. After this election, where the people spoke so compellingly about how much Governor Corbett's billion-dollar cut in education has hurt our kids. So we need every vote, and we need everybody who's listening, their voice to be heard, to say, let's do right, let's get on with it, let's get a budget done, and let's start moving forward. So we'll see a full-court press from the administration to get public to go and, you know, 
call people and we're call you. We're on game, we're on time, and we are on our best. We're ready to rock and roll and win. The NAACP <laughs> today, the Philadelphia NAACP today, uh, held a press conference. And Wednesday asked um, the State Gaming Commission to reconsider the Cordish property here in Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. This might be the first time you're hearing about this. Mm-hmm. They're concerned that Cordish um, has had problems in other cities when it comes to uh, racial allegations. Mm-hmm. Would the governor be willing to ask the um, Gaming Commission to look at it again and maybe, if necessary, pull the license? Well, certainly the governor respects the NAACP. Uh, if these are serious questions and allegations, apparently, that are being raised, and I am sure that the governor would want to make sure that every attention, every review, every analysis of those questions and concerns was given. So I'm sure that's where his concern would lie. But the, but the Gaming Commission can't pull a, 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 a license if it's already granted it, right? It would have to be something extraordinary. In, in over my head in terms of what their terms and conditions are, but certainly uh, whenever questions like this are raised, they you know have to be taken seriously and looked at. Well, Kathleen, thank you very thank much. You. I haven't spoken to you since uh, since you were a candidate for uh, governor and uh, you were part of our WURD debate. It's a unique city council session, ladies and gentlemen, because usually the chief of staff or governor isn't waiting this long. So, Kathleen, thank <laughs> you very much for being with us.